Hi, I'm Ben Nyland, President and CEO of Loop Energy. It's an honor to be speaking with all of you today, and thank you for joining me as we discuss some of the challenges facing electric commercial vehicle adoption and what we can do about it. As you all know, electrification has now become a mega trend, and it's happening in every facet of our lives. A mega trend like this creates transformational change across many industries. And with change comes opportunity. The opportunity of electrification creates a system problem involving both electric vehicles and charging infrastructure. As it often happens in the early days of any disruption, there are a lot of polarizing opinions over what the future looks like. When it comes to vehicles, some believe 100% battery solution. Others argue the benefits of hydrogen. At the end of the day, the decision rests with consumers and it's increasingly evidenced by the market more often than not, the solution requires both hydrogen and batteries. What's particularly interesting is that as the market matures, it's becoming clear that the symbiotic relationship between batteries and fuel cells extends beyond the onboard systems. Our charging infrastructure is as important to batteries as hydrogen fueling is to the hydrogen fuel cells. People seem to assume that they can get as much electricity as they want, wherever they want, especially in a city but this is simply not true. Integrating fuel cells directly into vehicles is one solution, and it works great in many cases. But can a fuel cell power charger be another option for vehicles that are better as 100% battery powered? The market feedback we're about to explore will clearly point to the fact that it is. People might think the demand for hydrogen electric battery chargers came from the R&D labs of the fuel cell companies looking for new market applications, but it did not. It came from customers who are looking for a solution to that last mile problem for electric vehicle and industrial machine battery charging. Here are some examples. My name is Peter Stadegaard. I am one of the owners of the company Stad, and we're based in the Netherlands, Europe. We are uh, building construction equipment with a complete electrical drive line to reduce the emissions uh, with 100%. The machines that we are building at the moment are a mini excavator, a two ton mini excavator, a 16.5 ton wheeled excavator, and a 30 ton crawler excavator. These machines run on batteries and uh, we, we design these machines, we, uh, we build these machines, we test them, and we do the, the serial production of the machines all in house. So here at Start Group, we are building zero emission construction equipment. So when we were developing these machines, we realized that especially in the bigger machines like the, like the 30 ton and the 16 ton machine, that they work also in areas where there's no charging available. Uh, for new big project, new infrastructure projects, these machines are standing um, in the middle of nowhere. And if these batteries are empty, you need to charge them. What Peter described is a scenario some people refer to as off-grid in the city. And it's not just limited to construction sites alone. Let's hear another example from a different perspective. Hi, my name is Lorenzo Rossi and I'm a director with Work Sport, a manufacturer of aftermarket products for pickup trucks. One of our most successful products is a patented solar cover with portable battery banks, which can be used to power your home in case of emergencies or power tools on a job site. And it can also be used as a range extender for the upcoming electric pickup trucks. In the US, one out of five EV owners switch back to ICE vehicles because they cannot deal with the range anxiety that is a result of lack of charging stations. In metro areas, we have a lot of charging stations. Outside of metro areas, there are a very few EV charging stations. Most EV owners are not comfortable taking their cars out of the metro areas because of lack of charging stations. But inherently, there are many obstacles to building charging stations outside of the cities. One, there is often no electricity available in such places for charging stations to be installed. Two, charging stations are usually built as fixed stations because of their complexities in the installation process. Three, when a charge point is installed in a plaza or parking lot, its ability to supply power is limited by the wiring or copper pipes that feed that station. For example, if a charge point is able to deliver 50 kilowatt per hour, then that's all it can deliver. 
To build charging stations that are non-parasitic and not hooked up to the hydro grid, hydrogen fuel cells can be used to power the stations in remote areas. There are many other benefits too. Our solution doesn't require excavation, copper lines, transformer, and it's mobile, meaning if it doesn't work in one area, we can move it to another area. And if you want to increase the power from 150 to 300 kilowatt hours, for example, the only thing we need to do is increase our fuel cell stacks. So we can be very flexible and future-proof based on need. This also means we can be more resilient. If there is a power outage, all those regular charge points are out of service. But in our situation, if there is an outage, it would not affect us because we produce energy on the spot via fuel cells. Imagine being able to drive from coast to coast on the trans canada Highway on an EV without having to worry about where to charge. EV drivers won't do this unless they know they can charge outside of metro areas too. We listen to our customers and that's why we are developing a solution to strategically place charge points using fuel cell technology where there is no grid. Here at GreenCore, we're an EV infrastructure builder and developer. Our team is uh, very experienced. Over the years, uh, the members of our team have built some of the largest and most complicated uh, EV charging stations uh, in North America, including ones that have large solar canopies. And over the years, we've learned a lot of things. Location is key. Just like cell towers and Wi-Fi, people expect infrastructure to be everywhere. People are not going to switch to an electric vehicle if they never see charging stations. So for electric vehicles to really take off, and we're seeing a big jump in them as, as, as we currently sit today, but for them to really take over 20, 30, 50% of the cars sold, they have to, charging stations need to be everywhere. Uh, even today you go, there's gas stations on almost every corner. The gas stations, you can't drive 20 minutes without seeing 20 gas stations. EV charging stations have to be the same thing. They've got to be in the grocery stores, the Home Depots, the Lowe's, the, the, the gyms, parking lots, the bay, everywhere that you go, there has to be EV charging. They don't have to have 12, 15 stalls, just have four stalls everywhere. That cost to do that infrastructure is far less when you build the smaller sites and the recognition that people will see more sites everywhere they go will build a comfort factor where people will choose to buy an electric vehicle because they'll be comfortable with the, the fact that they'll be able to charge everywhere, whether they go to a restaurant, a, a fast food restaurant, a quick serve restaurant, whatever you want to call it, a gas station, they'll be able to charge at the grocery store, at the gym, everywhere they go. And that will make a huge huge impact on, on a person's decision to buy an electric vehicle. The problem is, is not all these locations have the required power and, and available. You know, the, the power is going to be a problem. The, the electrical grid is tapped in a lot of places to max capacity. For the last several years, we've seen in California where they're having brownouts and blackouts over the summertime. What, what happens when you add uh, 500,000 electric vehicles uh, on the road in California, which that's going to cause havoc on, a, on an electrical grid that's already tapped in the hot summer months. And in some of those locations, like in California and other la large states and, and places throughout the world, uh, EV uh, costs for charging are going to skyrocket because of the cost of electricity. Demand charges can get very unreasonable at peak performance of the day. And we believe that to solve that problem, hydrogen powered fuel cells is the key there because we can generate electricity anywhere in the world at almost any location if you have the supply of hydrogen figured out. And with our partnerships with Loop Energy and Biotech, those big pieces of the puzzle have been solved. And we think this is going to be a huge, huge impact and change to the industry and really be able to roll out electric vehicle charging in some of the places we would have never thought and drive down some of those costs and really make it available to the to the normal user. It's our intent to build about 15 to 1600 uh, hydrogen powered EV charging stations, all DC fast over the next five or six years in North America. And we really think that's gonna make a change. What they just described is what's driving the demand for hydrogen electric battery charging equipment. The greatest thing about demand is that it tends to quickly translate into supply. And just like that, the industry is responding. 
Loop Energy is a very customer-centric organization. Everything we do ultimately has the objective of making the customer's life easier. We know hydrogen fuel is the largest difference maker in the total cost of ownership. So we have developed an industry leading fuel cell, one that delivers up to 16% better fuel efficiency. From a customer standpoint, we're trying to solve their biggest cost barrier. If you look at the, the total cost of ownership, you see that, that the, 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 the fuel uh, efficiency is, is very important. If it's, if it's uh, battery powered or if it's hydrogen, Powered. Uh, this is one of the main costs that we need to reduce. And Loop Energy, with this high efficiency uh, fuel cell technology, uh, is, is possible. We can we can integrate this into our machines and have the solution for the future. So what we're what we're looking for in the hydrogen uh, systems is that we are uh, well, for our customers. We want a affordable, high quality, high efficient hydrogen system fuel efficiency is critical to the cost of ownership the more fuel efficient we are the more there is a business case for both logistics and cost fuel efficiency is a critical element for any solution to build a charging station outside of the cities and again customers demand stations outside of the cities in order to adopt Fuel efficiency will significantly impact our cost, and that is why we have contacted Loop Energy to work on this project with us. And although our industry-leading fuel cell technology is a huge part of creating market impact, so is our total customer care program. With our total customer care program, we align a network of channel partners and suppliers to create a full ecosystem servicing our customers. Under this program, we've successfully helped our customers like the ones you've heard from, to find the right channel partners. Let's hear from one of our partners, Alliant Batteries, about their market observations. Alliant Battery has been designing and manufacturing a lithium battery for electric vehicles since 12 years. Our typical applications range from cleaning industry to manufacturing industry, construction machinery, and agricultural machinery as well. In the recent years, we have developed integration for the lithium battery together with the onboard alternator and generators in order to make a hybrid vehicle. In the last 12 months, demand for battery hydrogen hybrid solution has grown exponentially. In the last month, we have been engaged in two separate projects requiring hydrogen fuel cell application. The integration between fuel cell and battery is a milestone that has to be reached as soon as possible in order to be able to supply the market with such a system, such a kind of system. When it comes to fuel cell, we certainly understand the impact that fuel cell efficiency has on the total cost of ownership of the system. Actually, hydrogen is very expensive as of today, so we need to have a fuel cell with the maximum efficiency. This feature, together with the safety and durability of the fuel cell, is, uh, uh, the, are the most important things that uh, has to be taken into account when looking at a fuel cell manufacturer. We are very happy to work together with Loop Energy. Their products have excellent performance, but we are quite confident we will do a good job together. We, with our lithium batteries, and then with their fuel cell with the patented e-flow technology that allows the fuel cell to have one of the maximum uh, efficiency in the market as of today. Another critical element of the program is hydrogen fuel. It's difficult to understate the importance of hydrogen fuel supply. And we've heard this loud and clear from our channel partners just a few minutes ago. That's why we've also partnered with companies like Bayotech to add another piece to our puzzle. Hi, Scott Dyer with Bayotech. I'm Vice President of Business Development, and we're real excited today to talk about Loop fuel cells and Green Core EV charging. So Bayotech, we're in the business of making uh, hydrogen, and, uh, and availability of hydrogen is one of the limiting factors to the adoption of fuel cells in the market. So Bayotech's model, we use a hub and spoke, so we produce hydrogen on a local basis and distribute it within a small geography. This optimizes the production cost and optimizes the uh, distribution cost of hydrogen, making hydrogen more affordable. And our belief is that more affordable hydrogen gives a higher opportunity for adoption of hydrogen 
fuel cells, and in this case, uh, EV charging. So Biotech, we're agnostic with regard to the color of the gas that we use. We use biogas, renewable natural gas, or any other color gas that you might want. And we meet customer requirements by doing that. But we think that this is a heck of an opportunity to marry up fuel cells, EV charging, and hydrogen production together to make a heck of a market opportunity to meet a business need. Thank you. We believe Biotech has a fantastic solution to solve that problem. It gets the production of hydrogen far closer to the areas where it's going to be used, which drastically would reduce down the uh, transportation costs. And transportation is a big part of that cost of hydrogen. You know, I, I really envision that in the next few years, you're going to see hydrogen at uh, less than $4 a kilogram. And once you get that down to that price, now it's a, it's a whole different world on the cost to fuel electric vehicles with hydrogen and other industries. As the saying goes, people don't want to buy a drill. What they want to buy is the whole. Customers don't want batteries or fuel cells. What they want is to buy a solution to operate their electric vehicles or construction equipment wherever they need, whenever they need. So at Loop Energy, we don't see it as batteries versus fuel cells either. Instead, we see what works for customers in different circumstances. We see hydrogen solutions for places where it isn't currently viable to convert to electric without it. And we use our innovation and fuel cell technology as an enabler, an enabler for our customers to adopt electric equipment seamlessly. We must address problems by delivering the end result. It's not just about the fuel cell. It's the viability and cost. It's having the ability to apply it to the market and make it attractive to customer circumstances. That's also why it's important for us to create an ecosystem for hydrogen adoption and why we've partnered with parts suppliers and hydrogen suppliers to create that end result. These are very exciting times in our industry. There's no doubt the electrification megatrend is creating a lot of opportunities for both battery and fuel cell solution providers. At Loop, we believe the best products are not designed around technology. Rather, products are built to solve problems in the most efficient way possible. The key to success is in listening to customers, developing the highest performance products to meet their needs, and working closely with channel and ecosystem partners to deliver seamless, integrated solutions. We also need to think creatively in instances where hydrogen on board is not the solution for electric vehicles, but where hydrogen gensets and charging infrastructure is where to address the electrification without sacrificing the customer's needs. Solutions start from listening to the real world. Let's address the customer's needs together. Thank you.